recording as well. So, hello everybody. Thanks for joining us and sorry for my clothes because I'm inside the university. Hello, Professor Lars. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, Fatima, please you remove your share at the moment. Thank you. Oh, I'm Hello, not sharing Pastor. anything. The, the, the no, no, Fatima no, no, is not me. The I'm other Fatima. Yeah, okay. Please. I'm muting myself. Thank you. Professor Lars, thank you very much. Thanks for joining us. That's a great, great Hello. pleasure. Hello. <laughs> so you can Hello. start. <laughs> okay. So uh, thank you. Uh, first of all, I would like to hear if you can uh, hear, hear my voice or is it delayed? No, that's very good. We can hear you very well. Perfect, perfect. Um, I was actually, uh, I'm, I'm not at office, you know, uh, Sunday is off day uh, in Denmark. So uh, I am in my... Um, uh, house at the land side and I was excited to do this. I, I brought my computer and I, I realized that my um, uh, electric connection led was, was at the office. So that's why my name is Vibe Root uh, at the moment. It's my wife and I got <laughs> okay. her computer. So uh, no stress. Uh, so uh, once again, thank you for uh, in, in inviting me to this uh, uh, exciting um, uh, event. And uh, I don't know uh, uh, how you uh, are doing this. I can understand that this is the fourth time and uh, some of you guys have, uh, uh, have been reading some stuff and uh, uh, my plan is that uh, I will perhaps let you discuss and then uh, I, I could uh, share some slides with you uh, uh, during uh, uh, the, the session. I feel it's uh, like we can make interactions and, and, and discuss, so it shouldn't be like a, 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 a boring lecture-like uh, stuff when I do some slides, but... but um, there's a lot of stuff in that paper. Uh, and I think that um, what could be interesting is to, to have some, 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 some clinical uh, uh, focus points uh, and, and uh, what, what might be some new ideas. Uh, and, and I think there's uh, a lot of controversies about the deep lesion and, and uh, uh, I think uh, a lot of this, uh, it is important to, to realize what do we have evidence behind and what do we think we think. So, so stuff like that, I think it's very important. Okay, so um, uh, Dr. Nekufa, I, uh, I suggest that you then run the, 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 the yes, further I do. progress of yes. that. Okay. Okay, first of all, again, I'm going to thank you again for accepting our invitation. That is a great pleasure to having a great name, Lars Brundle, with us. And I'm, I'm sorry for the pronunciation of your name. Can you- And me too for yours. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you so did that, that very well. You did that very well, I'm surprised. Thank you very much. But <laughs> for, for your name, can you uh, teach us how to pronounce your name? Because in many of our courses, we mentioned your name, everybody knows you around the world. So you are a famous scientist, famous endodontist, and also you are a gentleman. More important okay. than a scientist, you are a real gentleman, a good friend. So I want to pronounce your name correctly. <laughs> Thank you. No, it, it's just simply Lars Bjorndal. 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 Okay, Professor Bjorndal, welcome. So, for Thank the you. information of our colleagues from around the world that uh, join us, we are speaking from Tehran University of Medical Sciences. In Iran, we have a unique system that the medical sciences universities are different from the other comprehensive universities. So, we have some dedicated universities to 
medical sciences, including medicine, dentistry, and other faculties. So therefore, our university is, uh, in terms of the uh, international activity also, is a pioneer university. So during the COVID-19 pandemic, we decided actually to run an online journal club because what we used to have, that was a, a mutual journal club between Iranian university that was actually inside the capital, which is Tehran, and then we decided to expand it to other countries. So at the moment, we have received a very good support from Asian Pacific and the Dante Confederation, which is APEC, and we have the president of the APEC with us at the moment, Professor Mehmet Beybor Kayahan. As you can see, uh, he is now showing himself. Hello, Beybor. Hello, hello. I am coming from the dark. <laughs> okay, yes, yes. Good your back, morning. Good back, morning. Your backlight is too much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I will adapt it uh, later. That's fine. Uh, no worries. As far as yeah, you are yeah. with us, thank you. So, the, Professor Kayahan is the president of APEC, APEC, which is the confederation of more than 24 endodontic associations. So, from the next month, this journal club will be under the name and the contract between Tehran University of Medical Sciences and APEC. So it, with the same situation, with the same situation, that means I have this honor to moderate the sessions and we select a, a, a hot topic like the one that we have today. One of our resident postgraduate student today the lucky one is Dr. Fatima Hamidzadeh. Fatima, can you wave to us? Fatima, say hello to everybody. I think your mic is not working, Fatima. I want to say hello. Okay, yeah, we can hear you now. So Fatima is going to present the article which is written by Professor Lars Brindel. If Oh, I don't know again about my... Uh, <laughs> pronunciation. And then, as you know, Professor uh, Lars, Lars, I'm going to speak, uh, uh, use your first name. Professor Lars uh, is also the chief editor of a very important textbook that in our advertisement, I send it to you, a textbook of endodontology that in this textbook, as you know, uh, from Denmark, we have received this very special book. And I think it is the fourth edition at the moment in the market. Am I right, Lars? Is it the fourth edition? Fifth, third, third edition. And uh, if you look at that book, you will understand why this book is different from other textbooks, because the background of that textbook is biology, is oral biology. And there are a lot of microbiology and biology in that book, so you can learn a lot about the uh, evidence-based uh, related to the biology and to endodontics, which is amazing. By the way, uh, we are at the moment in the university, in, in school. We are seeing, in, as you know, in the dentistry department, we see urgent patients as well. So with me, I have my postgraduate student around the table that you can see some of them as well. And on this side as well. So if you add us, uh, we have, we are one, two, three, four, five, six, and my, myself seven to 132 people that join us. At the moment, we are almost 140 people from around the world listening to Lars and Fatima discussing about management of pulp exposure. We love pulp. We don't want actually to remove pulp. However, as endodontists, unfortunately, we reject the pulp tissue and we put it inside the bin. But Lars is going to teach us if we can save it or not. Thank you very much, Lars, to all of your effort and all of your scientific effort we really appreciate that. And I'm happy to say that we have Hassam as well. Thank you very much, Hassam. I think Hassam also is connected to us from Denmark, if I'm correct. Am I correct, Hassam? Can you turn on your microphone? Dr. Mir Mohammadi Hassam is one of our Iranian friends that's living in European countries. And I'm sure, is he in Denmark? Okay, Hassam, please say some greeting and we are going to stop. Hey, uh, uh, thank, thanks, Dr. Nekufa, for everything. Uh, so, uh, good morning, because for, for us it's uh, still morning. So, uh, I'm, uh, I'm in the Netherlands uh, and I'm, uh, oh, you're I'm in working Netherlands. at Okay, Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
Okay, good. We have a lot of people from India. Thank you very much. Hello, India. Thanks for joining us. A lot of people from Turkey. Thanks to Turkey also to joining us. Many people from Iran. I can see names from Canada, from UK, again from Iran, from different, oh, from Oman as well. Thank you very much, Fusion. Hi, thanks. All of you, I cannot actually mention all the names. By the way, today is a very important day and I don't want to waste your time. And I think now we have more than 150 participants. I play a little to receive all of our friends from around the world and make sure everybody is inside the room. Okay, Fatima, the stage is yours. If Lars wants to stop you, Lars, you can do that anytime. So if you want to stop Fatima, please feel free to do that. If any of our participants have any question, they can type their question, Lars can read them, I can read them for Lars as well. And we will ask Lars all of our question. And if we don't like his article, we don't hesitate to help tell him. We are going to criticize the author. That is a great day. Okay, Fatima, please go ahead. Uh, first of all, I want to say hello to uh, all of the colleagues and uh, dear professors around the world. Uh, today... Go ahead, we can hear you very well. Uh, I want to uh, present and uh, discuss uh, the art review article uh, with this topic, uh, management of deep caries carries and the exposed pod, uh, which is uh, published in the, in, in the International Endodontic Journal. Uh, first, we have an introduction on caries as a disease. A caries is the most uh, common non-communicable disease with a greater prevalence in patients uh, from low uh, social classes, uh, actually. And uh, it is very important that an average of about 5% of the overall health expenditure in industri industrialized and non-industrialized countries is spent on uh, caries management every year. Uh, if we want to describe uh, caries in uh, the process of uh, development, development of uh, caries uh, in simple words, uh, we can say that we will have an enamel demineralization then uh, the defensive reactions of pulp and dentine complex uh, will occur. Uh, and if these uh, procedures continue, uh, we'll further have demineralization and actually a uh, cavitation in dentine. Um, if you want to uh, assess uh, the depth of lesions uh, clinically, it is very difficult and actually um, we can say it is impossible. Uh, sometimes. But uh, with radiographic evidence, uh, we can make some terminologies. Uh, deep carious lesion is a lesion uh, which uh, has reached the, the inner third or inner quarter of dentine uh, and it has a risk of pulp exposure actually. An extremely deep uh, lesion is a lesion which penetrates the whole uh, thickness of dentine and it uh, has um, the risk of pulp exposure in the process of uh, our clinical, uh, uh, our clinical um, assessment. Uh, and also, uh, even we uh, should uh, emphasize on the fact that even in the initial lesions, it will have the uh, pulp response uh, just inside the pod at the site of uh, the lesion. And uh, there is no need to um, uh, expose the pod uh, just by the lesion to uh, have these uh, reactions. Uh, here you see the two radiographs. The, a, the picture A uh, shows us a deep carious lesion and picture B is an extremely deep lesion, uh, which I uh, mentioned that it penetrates the whole thickness of and the dentine according to uh, radiographic evidence. Uh, management of deep caries uh, has been traditionally uh, with complete uh, caries removal and uh, when the pulp was exposed uh, the clinician decided have decided usually decided to uh, do uh, root canal therapy. 
But uh, today we uh, try to uh, have uh, some minimally invasive approaches which are uh, bio biologically based. And uh, they, these approaches uh, emphasize on selective carriage removal and diet control, uh, actually. And they, their uh, aim uh, is to maintain the vitality of the pulp tissue. Um, in cases uh, of carriage pulp exposure, the literature, previous literature, literature actually, uh, focused uh, on the fact that these um, treatments uh, that we usually call them vital pulp therapy, uh, vital pulp treatments, uh, they have poor prognosis according to uh, previous literature. But by introduction of new biomaterials, techniques, and understanding of uh, pulp repair mechanisms, uh, the outcomes uh, have uh, improved, and uh, we now uh, see in the literature that pulp capping, partial pulpotomy, and full pulpotomy have uh, satisfying outcomes. But I think Lars is going to add something. Okay. Lars, please. Um, I, I just want to, uh, I'm curious to know, um, you know, uh, as an endodontist, uh, we uh, receive quite often patients uh, where a lot of, of, of the story about how to avoid uh, exposure uh, somehow uh, has, has, has been completed and we are facing uh, quite often in reality uh, the act of, of removing the entire uh, pulp tissue. How much are you uh, involved in, 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 let's say, starting the tooth from the very start in terms of, of, of uh, caries removal procedures when you uh, receive referrals? Uh, or, or are you, uh, let's say, uh, traditionally fo focusing on the, on the teeth when, when we actually have, have uh, gone beyond that stage of, 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 of uh, avoiding exposure because that's that's often uh, you can say we can talk a lot about capping and stuff like that but in reality how often besides university environments how often do you as a specialist in private practice faces the, the, the this issue that was a long question no, no, that's a very good question. I think that for this question, I'm going to select some of the instructor from around the world to quickly to answer to that question first. Uh, first about uh, that one, I'm going to tell you a quick answer myself from the Tehran University of Medical Sciences point of view. And then I'm going to ask uh, Professor Merich Kapandak to speak about that from the point of view of uh, one of the school in Turkey and maybe uh, one of our friends from other countries as well. So in Iran, uh, and most of the school in Iran, somehow I would say, unfortunately, we are very specialty based and we don't have any integrated system. So what we have, we have prostodontic department, we have operative department, we have endodontic department. So that means in endodontic department, we don't have any vital pop therapy cases a lot. And most of the cases that when they have caries, they re refer to operative treatment for the operative department. And in operative dentistry department, obviously they try not to expose the pulp tissue at all. So they don't like actually to expose and they prevent from that. That is for them. But if the exposure happen and if they cannot control the exposure by doing direct pulp capping or indirect pulp capping or other capping technique, they refer to us and then it is time for us to do the resectional treatment or non-vital root canal treatment. So uh, if I want to answer you in one sentence in endodontic treatment, unfortunately, we don't teach and we don't deal with vital pulp treatment. However, in some universities in Iran, some change happens. I know in some universities they have a novel technique. You may hear the name of Professor Said Askari. He is actually one of the pioneers in Iran that uh, developed, a, 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 I would say, a very heroic system of vital pulp treatment or even doing sometimes 
hypotomy as the permanent treatment. So we criticize him for that purpose. I'm not going to discuss that at the moment. But uh, in their university, I think we have Professor Zargar. So I may ask Professor Zargar to answer that question after marriage. Marriage, can you tell us about your system in your university? Sure, thank you very much. Uh, somehow we are lucky on that uh, sense because uh, we have a chance to see the patients all together. Uh, and so if we, uh, we decide together with the operative dentistry and endodontics, endodontics uh, who is going to treat the case. And in case of referrals, direct referrals, uh, we are lucky again because the deep carriers is, um, in many cases referred to the Department of Endodontics. So we receive uh, such cases. In the undergraduate clinics, we are lucky again because uh, we have an integrated multidisciplinary clinic. So uh, I think it's a chance we see many of them. Okay, thank but, you very much. And may I ask uh, uh, Dr. Asadian Hadi also to open his mic and tell us what they do in their university. Hadi? Hadi, your microphone. Okay, Hi. okay, please go ahead. Is my voice clear? Yep, somehow. Yep, please. Clear? Yes, 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 uh, please. I, I think I had some problems with my connection. It's just my connection is somehow unstable. I don't hear you clearly. Okay, um, we can hear actually, you. Um, uh -huh. We treat the same way. Uh, we treat the cases as you do in Tehran University of Medical Sciences in different departments, in the Department of Restorative Dentistry and Endodontics, differently. Actually, the student talks in the restorative department is a scandal <laughs> for the students. And uh, there is dentist and the Okay, Hadi, I think we cannot hear you very well. Sorry about that, but I need you. I think your connection is not very good. So I move to another uh, colleagues from maybe India. Uh, one of our colleagues from India, sure. please turn on your microphone and answer the question that Lars mentioned. Any of our colleagues from India can give us a quick comment about that? Okay. We don't, uh, maybe, I don't see, uh, Professor Miglani, are you here? I can see Professor Pariroch from Kerman University. Professor Pariroch is one of our pioneer in terms of uh, suggestion of MTA and other vital pulp therapy techniques. Professor Pariroch, can you turn on your microphone and tell us your idea about the question that Lars raised? Okay, I think, uh, we already mentioned what happened in um, most of us, so integrated system and a speciality-based system. Lars, you can now give us your comment. Well, uh, e even you can say in, 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 in Denmark, where we have relatively few specialities, uh, we are facing this problem. Uh, I mean, uh, vital pulp therapy uh, done by endodontist is, is primarily taking place at the universities. And uh, one of my uh, uh, favorite topic is that it, it, sometimes it could be cool to, to look uh, uh, on this uh, from the patient point of view and if, if we should uh, focusing on the best uh, benefits of the patient it may be nice if, 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 if the various topics within a, a dentistry is somehow could collaborate uh, and bringing like uh, uh, the patient safe from one paradigm uh, to another, so to speak, uh, but, 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 but it's very difficult. It's very difficult. Uh, and, and we are facing that many general dental practitioners, uh, with all respect, uh, uh, may do cappings, but maybe not in the way we would love them to do it. So, so on that uh, basis, uh, the vital pulp therapy has at the moment, uh, a very uh, 
a tough way to progress. Uh, and I don't know how to solve it, but I think it's, it's important to say it out loud that uh, we as endodontists are trained to, uh, for many years, tradition for, for a much more complex treatment. But in reality, the pulp vitality therapy is also kind of complex, but, but, but it, it has always been like, okay, uh, it's easy to do. Uh, but in fact, uh, it may not be that easy. So it could be cool to, to change the culture and, and uh, well, maybe it should be more uh, officially that the vital pulp therapy uh, should be uh, a specialist treatment. And in the view that uh, the, the endodontist actually should do the caries removal as well. And that's that. That would be the the, uh, the the difficult thing, probably to 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 uh, to change. But but you know all that if you have the tooth from the start, you would really have the control of the stuff. But but the reality, maybe in university environments you can do like that. But the reality out there is really a problem in terms of, of, of trying to do the best for the tooth uh, when we speak about pulp, uh, 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 vital pulp therapy. And I, I just want uh, to say that, that uh, we know that, uh, and then we can discuss the topic today, but, 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 but we also know that, that uh, maybe not uh, that many that could have been received a, a, a vital pulp therapy, receives it, uh, it's much easier to get a pulpectomy. We know about that. And uh, you know, if you don't do the vital pulp therapy in the right way, uh, well, the patient gets pain. So it's not very popular to do it if you can't do it. So people may leave it. Uh, but but ha let's have it in, a, in the back of our head, of our minds uh, when we continue uh, the seminar. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, I don't know, Professor Pairach, are you able to speak or not? Uh, if you are able, you can give us your comment while we are waiting for him. Uh, may I ask Professor Kayahan, what do you think, Professor yeah. Kayahan, about this? Yeah. Uh, and this is the reality. Sometimes some endodontists think that. Uh, vital pulp therapy is the prophylaxis of the peripheral bone uh, because, because when you do capping or vital pulp therapy like uh, pulpotomy, uh, you cannot follow the patient. And after then the teeth can be necrosed, the tooth can be necrosed and it can defect the peripheral bone. So uh, with the rising of implantology, uh, and probably it affects endodontics, and most of the endodontics, endodontists think that uh, vital pulp therapies are the prophylaxis of peripheral bone, rather than pulp capping. That's an interesting idea, but uh, on, on, on site, uh, we can see this uh, approach. Lars, if I want to add something to that, that means that maybe we are worried about the predictability and prognosis of vital pulp therapy com comparing to root canal treatment. So if we want to make a crown, for example, if we do direct pulp capping, we are not confident enough to make a crown on it. So that is what uh, I think uh, Professor Kayahan is trying to say. So what do you mm -hmm. think? Yeah, of course. Uh, uh, you know, uh, you may have read that paper. I myself have made a, 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 a randomized clinical trials about capping and, and with a terrible prognosis. Uh, I mean, after five years, less than 10%. Uh, and we may, uh, uh, we may discuss that further. So I don't want to get, get into that uh, more in deep. But what was realized on that uh, results was that we need to improve the procedure, uh, we, we, we call it class two, yeah? If, if we really want to do the capping on a carous leash. So, so, I mean, it was a nice result in terms of saying, okay, uh, we need to, to really think about if this is going to be something that if it makes sense, you also need to do it uh, properly. 
uh, proper. And, 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 and people that know the stuff about controlling infection, uh, well, uh, then, then you, 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 you have uh, uh, the key. But, but um, uh, it was, uh, in a way, somehow a little bit disappointing. I think it was around 30% uh, after uh, one year, uh, we had success of the cabbings. And, and maybe it was because we were treating pulps that were uh, chronically uh, inflamed. And then you have a critical cocktail when you expose and you may entrap hygienic fragments into the chronic pulp, then you, then you have a, 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 a really critical uh, 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 cocktail, so to speak. But but uh, uh, sorry for interrupting. Uh, we we no, that, that's uh, a very good important an important introduction. Thank you very much. Fatemet, you carry on. Here we are going to uh, talk about the etiology of caries. A bit louder, please. Louder. There is a hypothesis uh, called ecological plaque hypothesis. Is the sound quality okay, Doctor Nekufa? It's okay. Sound is good. Uh, there is a hypothesis called ecological plaque hypothesis, which uh, emphasizes on the fact that um, whenever we have uh, caries, uh, an imbalance uh, in the biofilm, the microflora biofilm uh, on the tooth has occurred. And um, evidence shows that we have um, some species uh, in uh, when uh, we have caries, we have some special species uh, that we have a strong positive correlation uh, between the presence of them and the um, occurrence of uh, caries. Also in more advanced lesions, we have uh, some uh, other species which are not uh, in normal um, um, biofilm of a tooth, which is uh, healthy and uh, Evidence has uh, proved uh, this uh, fact. About the histopathology of caries uh, within the team, uh, we know that enamel is a microporous uh, solid, and the pulp and dentine form a complex or continuum. The initial pulpa response to caries is uh, activated uh, by the cell wall lipopolysaccharides of uh, the bacteria. The acid and the, the bacteria which are present in the caries uh, lesion. Uh, also, uh, the metabolic uh, products of uh, the biofilm and the acids uh, which are uh, produced uh, by acidogenic and aciduric um, species uh, present in the caries lesion. The demineralization is thought to be absent of bacteria as long as the dentin is not clinically exposed. Uh, cavitated carious dentin lesion um, is uh, just just have uh, because we have uh, these uh, species um, in the cavitated uh, carious dentin, uh, we will have a penetration of uh, LPS cell wall bacteria uh, through dentinal tubules, uh, which is uh, recognized by uh, TLR four receptors, uh, toll like. Uh, receptors uh, and this uh, will um, result in the pulpa reaction, the initiation of pulpa reaction which results in inflammation actually. Uh, and then we have a question, what is the defensive response of uh, pulp to caries? Uh, the response of pulp uh, is a combination of inflammation and the promotion of mineralization and there would be a balance between these two uh, events. Uh, initially, as uh, was uh, mentioned, uh, pathogen recognition uh, by odontoblasts and later fibroblasts and stem cells and immune cells uh, will uh, result in the initiation of uh, inflammation. And if the irritation of the pulp is mild, uh, we'll have off-regulation of existing odontoblast activity and uh, the production of reactionary dentine. And if the stimuli is uh, stronger, uh, will have uh, odontoblast death uh, and uh, through recruitment of uh, dental pulp uh, progenitor cells uh, will have reparative dentine as a result. Um, 
Other cells, such as fibroblasts or fibrocytes, may in fact produce uh, the mineralized tissue, um, in spite of the fact that we think uh, it is odontoblasts, just uh, who, uh, which uh, try to take part in uh, production of mineralized tissue. Uh, and pulp exposure healing is uh, it has occurred when uh, we have the formation of a continuous hard tissue barrier over the exposure and a residual pulse free of inflammation. If we have these two uh, events uh, together, we say that a pulp exposure healing has occurred. About the role of dentin in repair, uh, evidence has uh, demonstrated that a uh, breakdown of dentin matrix uh, leads to production of uh, dentin matrix components, um, which take part in uh, the formation of uh, this uh, um, new uh, hard tissue. I, I mean the repair, the um, repair of a uh, pulpal tissue, and it is uh, occur occurred uh, in combination with other bioactive molecules. Um, this dentin matrix components, uh, which are um, a result of uh, the breakdown of the matrix of dentin, um, may be some growth factors, uh, chemokines, cytokines, and matrix metalloproteinases. Uh, all of these uh, take part in some um, uh, repair um, uh, processes, for example, neurogenesis, uh, angiogenesis, the mineralization, and uh, recruitment of stem cells. Uh, and as you see, all of them will uh, take part in the repair. Uh, about the clinical ap applicability of uh, these uh, components, um, we can say that uh, when we use EDTA, hydrolic calcium silicate cements, calcium hydroxide, dental resins, ultrasonic agitation, and epigenetic modifying agents, they all uh, try to sequester uh, dentimetric components and augment the regenerative response. Um, there is some evidence that, uh, say, uh, sodium hypochlorite uh, has a deleterious effect on stem cell survival and uh, differentiation ability, and maybe because of uh, that, uh, in the revitalization procedure, procedures, uh, the final rinse uh, is better to be a 17% EDTA solution. Uh, there is another uh, fact that in vital pump therapy, uh, although uh, EDTA irrigation uh, may stimulate um, uh, repair through uh, the, um, those uh, components, but uh, it may also stimulate bleeding, which is uh, not um, uh, favorable in the process uh, we want to uh, apply. Uh, role of pop cells in repair. Mm, pop cells uh, will uh, express some genes and uh, proteins uh, which will contribute to uh, the mentioned um, processes I uh, told in the uh, previous slides. Final destination here, I think. Okay, thank you very much. And there was, there was also another question about the type of the tissue that will uh, replace after the treatment. Uh, is there any idea about or any consensus about this, the quality of the tissue and the type of tissue that replace after vital copper? I mean the heart. Well, it's, it, uh, it's also a very interesting uh, biological approach. Actually, right now, um, uh, we're doing a very exciting work. I think, uh, I don't know whether he's still around in the group, uh, but uh, Sumni Demand, uh, his Mm -hmm. uh, specialist student from from uh, ACTA, we're doing a, a very interesting uh, study on, on, on deep and extreme deep lesions, and and I think uh, on human teeth, and that's my key point. A lot of this has been uh, examined on the basis of animal studies, and um, you 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 can find like a, a pattern. Uh, uh, 
of, of, of the various tissues, but, but, but uh, it's always a little bit different when you look in human teeth and um, it, it's very complex. And I, I think the issue about the steam cells, uh, uh, we, we have an, uh, a consensus on that. Where, where are they actually um, uh, around? Are they in the cell free or are they actually everywhere? But what we can, what we can interpretate is the structural pattern of the Tetra dentin, and um, we we do find a mix, mixture uh, in the very early stage of Tetra dentin. We do find like the primary odontoplast, uh, let's say, having an ongoing production combined with uh, kind of new beginners. You see the finger-like projections of what one in the old days could call secondary odontoplast, and that's mixed together. Uh, how that happens, uh, we do not know. Uh, so it's not like we have a complete atubular border uh, between uh, the types. If, 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 if the external injury is quite low, you, you can actually see that the tubular structure uh, it, it is, is, is running all the way and perhaps it, it, it will uh, be taken over by uh, odontoplast-like cells. But if you really get rid of the odontoplast, you can discuss uh, uh, what type of cells will arrive. Uh, and of course, again, based on the structure of the Cheteri dentin or the dental uh, or the connective tissue matrix, is it tubular or atubular? Uh, then we can talk about the type of the cells. Going more deep into the biology, uh, a lot of uh, very uh, inter interesting studies on, on the steam cell is, is, is currently running, but, but I don't think we have a, a final evidence of, of the origin of, of the cells producing uh, um, uh, the Cetera dentin. But of course, at a very late stage, one could speculate that we are uh, away from the classical features of, of uh, a dentoplast-like uh, cell. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much indeed. There are some more questions that I raise them after we go a little further. Fatima, please. Uh, then we discuss current challenges to decision-making in deep caries management. Uh, we lack um, a device that can accurately establish the point at which the inflammatory process uh, become irreversibly uh, damaged and the necrosis ensues. Uh, and uh, decide whether uh, exposing the pulp is necessary or is best avoided. And can vital pulp therapy procedures provide uh, predictable outcomes? In clinical practice, uh, even when uh, we have important subjective and objective data, uh, it is asked um, from different dentists, and we uh, and the studies uh, have proved that th there is uh, not a consensus in the uh, treatment approach that they uh, try to uh, use. Uh, even when uh, I emphasize on the fact that uh, even when there is important subjective and objective data. Economic factors may also alter treatment decisions. Uh, for example, uh, uh, as remuneration for uh, RCT in a molar tooth uh, will be radically different to a vital pulp therapy procedure on the same tooth. We need next generation diagnostic devices to accurately determine the, the inflammatory state of the pulp. Uh, still, uh, it is uh, something that we lack a device for it. Are endodontists the best candidates maintaining pulp vitality? Uh, there is uh, some controversy because uh, expertise on aseptic strategies fundamental to optimal maintenance of pulp vitality is something that endodontists are very good uh, at. Uh, they uh, usually use rubber dam isolation, uh, which is very important uh, to uh, the vital pulp therapy procedures. But uh, the nature of secondary care, uh, in which uh, endodontists may mainly uh, are involved, 
um, leads them uh, usually to uh, RCT instead of uh, vital pop uh, therapy procedures. Uh, so we need clear guidelines, uh, both for treatment and for referral. Also, at the very least, increased education for practitioners in the optimum way to handle pulp tissues may be, um, a good, may be a good help. Treatment to avoid pulp exposure, uh, both complete caries removal and classic uh, indirect pulp capping concept uh, were uh, invasive strategies and uh, there are some kinds of over treatment. A five-year uh, follow-up of uh, RCT uh, showed that a stepwise excavation approach for the management of deep caries lesion was superior uh, to a complete caries removal procedure, uh, which was carried out in one visit. And uh, this uh, follow-up uh, showed that less palpal exposure, less pain and more teeth with vital palps in the stepwise group. Uh, but there are still challenges. Re residual carrier stenting may shrink and potentially impair the coronal seed, uh, which, is, uh, which may uh, lead to some complications uh, for palpal tissue. And there is lack of a permanent coronal seal during the less invasive carrier uh, removal strategies, uh, which again may uh, cause uh, some palpal and apical pathosis. And if the patient moves to a new dentist, it may uh, appear that caries remained, and further intervention may be suggested by that uh, then Stepwise ex excavation uh, in detail uh, can be described as follows. Uh, carried out, it is carried out in uh, two visits. The aim is- uh, Fat uh, Fatima, can I stop you again? Uh, the, the, Lars, please go ahead. Uh, I, I just want to, 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 to stress uh, the, the interesting point about the shrinkage of, 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 of the, the caries dentin. And we, in reality, that concern, because, you know, uh, we may have reached a, a good consensus about the stepwise excavation approach. Uh, and now uh, communities are trying to ask, is, is the final second visit actually necessary and one <coughs> excuse me one 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 uh, point i just wanted to add is that the shrinkage uh, element uh, would be uh, the point what could one could have concern about if you do if you do not carry out the second visit and and I, I, you may you may end up saying it. Sorry, uh, but, but uh, I, I just also want to say that in terms of evidence, uh, I think we are still not there talking about in apples leaving caries tissue behind in the deep lesion. Uh, uh, we still need uh, work to do, and uh, we're actually uh, carrying a, a big multi-center trial. Uh, even uh, including uh, friends from India working on, on, on this topic. Uh, but, but it's important when you mention it in relation to the stepwise excavation, I may have uh, taken it for wrong, but the shrinkage phenomena is uh, what we actually take care of when we do the second visit. One could, normally one could ask, what do I do here when I arrive? It looks very arrested, but in reality, you may find a gap between the filling and the tissue left behind. And on the long run, that could mean a, a, a problem with the restoration. So one of, of the points doing the second, it may not matter. That is what we are going to investigate. But it may also be a relevant point that we are optimizing the final cavity for the restoration because we are removing the arrested. It's not, there's nothing wrong with the arrested tissue perhaps, but the, it has shrinked and the, um, the cavity has perhaps a, a, a less optimal interrelation. And therefore we want to, to actually uh, end up having a permanent restoration on a cavity that do not change. And, and that cause of the second 
visit might not have been highlighted that much because people have been focusing on removing the, 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 the tissue left behind. But in reality, we want to optimize the cavity. Thank you. Okay, Lars, there are two more questions and then I'm going to ask uh, two of our colleagues also to add comment to that. First about the markers for the diagnosis and the second one is about the use of MRI for the diagnosis of the vitality of the pulp tissue and also the quality of the uh, formed tissue or replaced tissue. What do you think about that? The markers, cell markers or molecular markers and also use of MRI. So the non-invasive measurements of inflammation, is that the question? Yeah. Yep. That we, in, in, as a, that, that, no, no, the that, question that, is, the question is, just the first question is about the use of magnetic resonance imaging, MRI, for evaluating the pulp status after doing the vital pulp therapy anytime. Is, do you think yeah, is it relevant? I have, um, I have to also sometimes say that uh, I will not be the correct person to 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 to, uh, pro, uh, pro, uh, to 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 answer that. So so it will be. Uh, I have to say that uh, I, I, uh, the, the the level of background behind that. I don't feel I can answer that. Okay. And what do, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm going to ask, uh, first I'm going to ask Dr. Pariro to add something and then Dr. Kumars, uh, because Kumars also sent a lot of good uh, comments in the chat room. So first I'm going to ask uh, Dr. Pariro because, because uh, Dr. Pariro, Masoud, are you ready? Yeah. Okay, Kumars, you go ahead and then, okay, Masoud is ready. Masoud, please share your slide. But if you unshare your slides, then Masoud is able to, so while Masoud is trying to share his slide with us, I'm going to quickly introduce Masoud Pairoch to you. Masoud Pairoch is one of the pioneer uh, endodontists in Iran. And as many of you know him, he published a lot of articles and one of his articles is most cited articles about MTA is one of the very hot topics and we are very proud to have him between us. And he is actually, is one of the very, very good scientists in Iran. So Masoud, please go ahead. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, first of all, let me thank you for this uh, very good uh, journal club that everyone will enjoy it, I am sure. Um, the slide that you can see here uh, is one of my experiences uh, in, uh, ANU, Estran National University in 2003. We did pulp capping for dogs and you can see the result here. Uh, in the left side, you can see crystals of MTA after setting and the right side, you can see globular structures, which, is the, uh, which are the, uh, um, the structures formed by dental pulp of dogs following pulp capping. And uh, I would like to say uh, there, this is the uh, structure we see mostly in HNE staining uh, by light uh, uh, microscopy. But here in SEM, uh, we took some pictures uh, from the side and you can see the globular structure would give some way to uh, future leakage and microorganisms that could penetrate into dental pulp. And for that reason, it's very important to have a very good coronal seal in order to prevent that, prevent that leakage. And uh, uh, it's very important because uh, at first when pulp come into contact with MTA or some other bioactive endodontic cements, the pulp with the um, would uh, form some structures that very uh, easily could uh, penetrate by bacteria, but then when some uh, hard structures form, then pulp could uh, provide some uh, more um, tubular mature structures. 
in the uh, in this slide i uh, took uh, sem in 5000s power as you can see here and uh, another slide here which also taken in uh, 1000 power you can see here uh, a few tubular structures in comparison with uh, calcus fritz or with highly tubular which is a mature previously formed dentin and here with a uh, lower number of uh, tubule, you can see the structures form following pulp capping by dental pulps. And this is the difference between the newly formed uh, heart tissue structures and mature previously formed structures. That is uh, regarding the question you asked before about the difference between structures of, of newly formed uh, heart tissues and previously formed heart tissues. Thank you. Thank you very much, Masoud. Uh, Kumars, okay, Lars, Lars, please. So do you, so now we, we, we are talking about uh, heart tissue uh, building after capping, um, correct? After capping, yeah? Yep. yep. Yes. Um, yep. So um, I always think about uh, the French uh, guy from from the 1980 that made a, a quite a nice huge monograph uh, about the pulp uh, boom uh, Louis Boom uh, talking about about fibrodentin. What is your opinion about uh, uh, fibrodentin as as like the first? step uh, and and then on on top actually you can say that fibrodentin in his his wording was uh, the first part of repetitive dentin and then on top of that have you ever seen then the tubular structure starting uh, like like uh, you know tfs want to show uh, the repetitive dentin starting with a tubular dentin and then on top of that you have tubular uh, dentin. What have you seen uh, in relation to the capping heart tissue? Uh, will it end with a tubular structure or is it mainly uh, atubular all the way? Uh, okay, uh, it depends on uh, when uh, we did uh, sacrifice the dogs and after how long we did uh, our experiments, you know. Uh, for example, I would like to show this image. This is the one that we took about uh, two weeks after pulp capping. Uh, uh, here you can see after two weeks, we have a calcified bridge. This is a, uh, MTA and here you can see a uh, dental pulp uh, beneath the calcified bridge and it's very important because you know in which uh, in which period after pulp capping we see the dentin or the calcified tissue beneath the uh, capping materials then you can uh, name it different names as as you mentioned Ricochi in 2014 say something about uh, uh, calcified bridge formation beneath the dental pulp and the very uh, strong uh, uh, article he published with his colleagues and it's very important to uh, it didn't, I, I, I guess the name is not important because it depends on the uh, time that we have following pulp capping and uh, the important point is at the first time we have unmature very uh, as you can see here a, a structure with uh, so many uh, tissues surrounded by calcified tissue the cells uh, rapidly form ca calcified bridge and for that reason some some of them may surrounded by those calcified bridge and for that reason, we have a non-tubular calcified bridge. But then after 
some hard tissue form beneath the, ca the capping material, then dental pulp could easily form a calcified bridge with mature tubular, uh, tubular-like uh, structures. And for that reason, we cannot call odontoblasts here. We call them odontoblasts-like cells, which are the cells that uh, provided by fibroblasts or uh, macrophages and other cells that uh, you, you know better than I. And uh, I guess, uh, for example, if someone see the calcified bridge here, may know something, but later they may see this calcified bridge, which is more mature, compared to the previous one, then they can say something else. They name it something else. And for this one, for example, you can see here, a calcified bridge in here is more mature than the calcified bridge here with uh, very um, uh, a structure which is not very unique. Good point. Uh, and there is also a question about the difference between the quality of the heart tissue when we do direct pulp capping comparing to indirect pulp capping. Sure. Lars or Masood, any of you, please go ahead. Well, I think that we have just heard very nicely uh, the uh, pattern where we have a, a direct uh, uh, exposure. Uh, 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 a tubular matrix is, 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 is the starting point. And uh, in, in relation to indirect or where you do not make a capping, uh, I think it will be an uh, ongoing process of, of the Cheteri dentin as, and it, it, it most probably would be, as Rikuchi uh, indicates in the uh, 2014 paper, uh, that uh, it, it may end up being a, 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 a tubular structure. But, but if you do change the environment, uh, as you would do if you do less invasive excavation procedures, it, it may be like you end up uh, as in a dentin bridge formation that the physiological conditions within the pulp would, uh, let's say, signal and, and, and do the possibility of a new tubular structures. But not that many studies actually is around talking about uh, what has been taking uh, place following an uh, indirect cap uh, in humans. Uh, so it's a very good question, but you could speculate as I've been doing now. Okay, thank you. Uh, Humars, go ahead, please. Hello to everyone. Um, I am honored to be participating in your conference that you held by uh, Dr. Nekufad, and I said that uh, MRI is not a um, suitable tool or device for evaluation of the form uh, tissue inside the pulp because we have the heart tissue. For evaluation, the routine radiograph of periapical, I also CBCT is suitable. And uh, it's important to know that uh, if symptoms of the pain lingering after the cold or hot stimulus, it is, it is possible for us to respect to the pulp tissue. Uh, and I believe that the pulp tissue is a saint and we should respect to it. Um, even the sensitivity to the precaution or um, lingering or spontaneous pain, it doesn't mean that we can't preserve the routine that exists in the root canal. It means we have, well, if it's a coronal pulpic tummy, it's possible for us to preserve the remaining pulp that existed in the root canal. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much. And there is also another question related to that because about the question is about the apical breakdown. So pre-apical breakdown. So Rikuchi believe that uh, even when we have pre-apical breakdown that is diagnosable in, for example, uh, CBCT, still we can do vital pulp therapy. However, on the other hand, many people believe that when we have pre-epical breakdown, we shouldn't do vital pulp therapy. Uh, this is the question. What do you think about that? 
Uh, I think uh, it's, impos it's possible for us, even when we have a preoptical vision, uh, by using, uh, as you know, uh, the preoptical has many paucity and deficits, such, uh, such as in 40%, the preoptical vision existed and the radiator did not show it. So even in a tooth with uh, a reversible palpitis, even in a tooth, with apical, preapical lesion, it is possible to preserve. We can do it. As you know, the new material that published in IEG, it's shown in mature tooth, we can overestimate, over instrument it, and uh, let go to uh, stem cell inside the root column, and um, show about the 90% success. It means in mature tooth, it is possible for us to use different kind of the regulations method and procedure. Also, if we have a preapical lesion, is possible for us to do it. Well, Lars, what do you think? Do you think if we have a preapical breakdown that is diagnosable on CBCT, can we do? vital pulp treatment, and obviously if it is not on the CBCD and on the preapical, because QMARS believe that even if it is on the preapical radiographs, we still can do vital pulp treatment. What do you think about that? Well, it's, it's, it's always a little bit uh, um, difficult to interpret the black hole, isn't it, on the CBCT? What, what is it? But it was interesting, of course, uh, the, 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 the group uh, from, from UK uh, um, doing these findings uh, that we may uh, be able to pre-diagnose uh, uh, inflammation um, uh, and uh, at a stage where the infection has not reached point of no return, in fact, uh, maybe even no infection at all. Uh, so, so it's interesting, but I also think there is uh, some problems in the interpretation of the black holes, uh, if we could call them that, uh, on the CBCT. Uh, actually, we have uh, have had uh, some nice uh, research uh, in our neighbor university in Denmark, uh, Kruse, uh, together with uh, Kirkevang, uh, have examined uh, cadavers uh, on 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 and used uh, and used uh, CBCT, and it's not always uh, straightforward uh, what you find uh, behind uh, these um, uh, uh, initial uh, uh, changes on the CBCT, but but the clinical findings from this study. Uh, showing uh, lesions before uh, the classical x-ray is, is very interesting. And they, uh, they also uh, could support it by their, their clinical findings. So, so uh, it's very interesting, but it may be an expensive way to uh, determine the status of the pulp if you want to expose it uh, within the uh, general practice environment, if, 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 if we should put it one step further. But as a research uh, topic, I think it was very interesting. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Yep. Uh, can I speak but please do it quickly because of the time. Okay, um, Dr. Turab Nejad presented about, uh, I think about uh, 20 years ago, a case uh, from the Japan. Uh, it's an uh, anterior teeth with periopical tesion, uh, pulpitized and then covering with MTA, and then followed for six months. The periapical lesion resolved totally without any manipulation inside the canal or adding other material inside. It shows that even adding material at the orifice of the canal, it is possible to change the pH at the epical, as many other articles shows, when we use calcium hydroxide. Lars, okay. anything that you want to add, or mm -hmm. can we carry on with Fatima? Excuse me, can I add something? 
Okay, uh, let, us, let us carry on a little with Fatima. What, what am I thinking to say is, I think because of the time, because we said 90 minutes for this donor club, so we just have something like 12 minutes from now. And definitely we cannot finish the article. While we are here, I want to ask uh, Lars, if possible, to carry on this maybe in two weeks time, if you are okay, and if it is okay for you to come back again to this online journal club and finish the article in the next two weeks. Is that okay for you, Lars, to join us again? Or maybe next week? Okay, so your microphone is off, uh, why, please. Okay, yes, well, we can hear you. That will be the uh, 8th of July, or what are you talking uh, about? Let me check, let me check. Um, Yes, 8th of July. So next week, now, tw today is 14th of June. No, no, that is the 28th of June. In two weeks, it is 28th of June. Am I right? Yes, 28th of June. Is that okay for you? Yeah, yeah. Sunday, yeah. Okay, good. So we, we, we carry on for 11 minutes because we, we actually promised everyone to be very punctual. So we start on time and we should finish on time as well. So uh, we will finish uh, in, 12, uh, in 10 minutes and we will see each other in two weeks. Okay, Fatima, you carry on for another five minutes because we want to have another five minutes question as well. Thank you very much, everybody. Uh, the process of uh, stepwise wise excavation uh, in detail is as described. Uh, it is carried out in two visits. The aim of the first stage is to change the cariogenic environment. Uh, selected carious uh, dentin removal to soft dentin is performed. And the second stage excavations uh, will uh, be held uh, several months later. Uh, and a calcium hydroxide based material or a hydraulic calcium silicate cement uh, between visits uh, will be applied. And the tools uh, are and the teeth are restored uh, with the glass polymer restorative material. Uh, physiological response to the capping um, is as uh, described: formation of a reparative dentin by odontoblast like cells uh, is possible after pop exposure. Uh, many non-mineralized um, defects, uh, called tunnel defects. Uh, can be uh, seen uh, under the microscope, and they may be a source of invasion of uh, microorganisms. Uh, and maybe that is why uh, we uh, should have a very good uh, coronal seal and a good restoration. Palpal inflammation and in situ diagnosis. Uh, maybe uh, we need further clinical studies uh, to investigate molecular-based uh, assays uh, for uh, diagnosis. Practitioners uh, must make do with the, the existing methods of detailed history and pulp sensibility tests. Uh, other options include uh, assessing the level of pulp uh, hemostasis as um, inflammation is uh, associated with uh, hypervascularization. Practically, the exposed pulp is packed with a damp cotton ball pellet and uh, pressure is uh, applied for at least two, five minutes uh, and this should be enough uh, time to achieve hemostasis under physiological conditions and then we'll have a dry working field and if the bleeding uh, persists it may be assumed that some of the pulp tissue is uh, still inflamed and uh, further pulp oil removal is necessary uh, till we uh, reach the healthy tissue um, as it was mentioned, uh, we should uh, uh, try to reach this uh, hemostasis and disinfection. Uh, and it is uh, done through visual analysis. Uh, actually, it is not sufficiently uh, accurate, but uh, it is uh, done in the clinic uh, through visual analysis. Uh, control of bleeding and avoidance of blood clot formation between capping material and the pulp tissue is necessary uh, because the presence of blood clot has been linked to higher risk of postoperative infection. Uh, it was shown that the various approaches did not affect the expression of bioactive uh, black proteins uh, related to repair. Uh, then, 
help me. Uh, there is a review on studies uh, uh, who um, just try to um, see if uh, sodium hypochlorite is a good disinfectant in these cases. Uh, a disinfection agent such as uh, sodium hypochlorite is uh, applied prior to application of capping material uh, to have a dissected um, environment in the cavity. Uh, um, sodium hypochlorite is generally the disinfectant of choice but has drawbacks as it is corrosive due to uh, its uh, organic tissue dissolution ability and it, is, it interacts with dentin uh, interfering with subsequent bonding processes uh, because of uh, collagen collapse and because of that uh, some evidence there are some evidence that um, say uh, chlorhexidin is preferred uh, for disinfection uh, in these cases pot capping classification um, here we have Fat the pot capping Fatima can I stop you please Thank you very much, because there are two more questions. I think this is a good place that we stop. So we stop at pulp capping classification for the next uh, journal club, which is in two weeks. And uh, there are two questions actually that we can, uh, and we can go ahead for that. First, I can see uh, um, Mr. or Mrs. Chandra Sekaran. Chandra Sekaran, can you hear me? And it, because you raise your hand and you want to speak. And then we have uh, Fatima Betul Bashturk. Fatima, please go ahead, ask your question while we are waiting for Chandra to turn on your mic, turn his microphone. Fatima Betul Bashturk, please go ahead. Uh, okay, thank you very much for the very uh, enlightening lecture, actually. Uh, I had the privilege to attend ESE's uh, conference, actually panel on uh, vital pulp treatment about two years ago in Amsterdam. And I had the privilege to uh, listen to uh, Professor Bjorndal himself. Um, uh, there were some debates about the um, agents to use for uh, controlling the bleeding. So I want to ask on a clinical basis, what, um, Professor Bjorndal would prefer to use while doing the um, controlling of bleeding. Uh, would he use, uh, would you use, I mean, uh, sodium hypochlorite or chloroxidin or distilled water or just simply cotton pellet? Thank, Thank you, you very much for the question. Also, there is a question related to the blood clot that uh, why we shouldn't have blood clot underneath of the, mater underneath of the material. And also, there is another question from Professor Kayahan about the sodium hypochlorite and also the best material to control the bleeding with that. Lars, please go ahead. Okay, thank you. First of all, I have to say that I'm, I'm, I'm very much uh, inspired of, of, of the work and, and protocol that was made by George Boken. And I think uh, he, he was perhaps one of the first that did the treatment using magnification and that push, pushed uh, the disinfection strategy from saline to uh, a, a, an actual disinfection. And based on the fact that uh, we, we, we have evidence, observational evidence, not randomized uh, uh, evidence, but based on the fact that that protocol has proven that it works, I, I uh, still uh, would use sodium uh, hypochlorite. Um, I know now that he has uh, increased the concentration to, I think, 10 uh, percent, but I, I will stick to, to, to the one that was published um, uh, back in, 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 I think, was it 2008 or something like that. Uh, in terms of the clot, it's very interesting because we have a lot of interesting in fact, bioactive molecules in the blood clot. But we also know that the blood clot is very um, uh, keen to uh, take up uh, bacteria. Uh, and I think it was uh, Schroeder uh, from Sweden in the mid-80s mid, mid, mid 80s that actually had the point that we should, we should really take care of not leaving a blood clot beyond the restoration because all the the, the capping material because we then raise the risk of uh, getting a uh, contamination. But, but uh, of course now we know that there's a lot of uh, interesting 
uh, bioactive uh, things uh, in the blood clot. So, so it's not because per se the blood clot is a problem. It's it's about whether we can control that it gets infection, uh, a higher risk of infection. I think. Okay, thank you very much. And Chandra, Chandra, please turn on your microphone. Chandra, you want to ask your question? Please go ahead. Okay, I think uh, that's it. So at the moment, uh, we, we are going to have to finish uh, our online journal club in one minute. Thanks again to Professor Lars for his contribution. That is amazing. I know this is Sunday and you should be with your family. Please send our greeting to your family and our apology to them. And thank you very much uh, for being with us. And we are very proud to have you in Tehran with us. Yes, please turn I'm on. I'm, I'm honored to get the invitation. So uh, we will see each other in two weeks. Yes, and I'm going to ask everyone to turn on their microphone and put their hands together and start clapping for Lars. Thank you very much, Lars. Thank you very much. Thank you and see you in two weeks. Goodbye everybody and bye, see you bye, in two weeks. Bye, 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 bye.